In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning, Father. And welcome to the shrine and my new basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Once again, today we come to thank God for all the blessings that we receive from Him. But we also come to pray, especially to ask the mercy of God and His compassion through the intercession to the prayers of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag. Let us continue praying for one another, especially for those who are in need, especially those who are suffering from various diseases, not only of COVID-19. Let us now make ourselves worthy of this holy celebration. Let us be reconciled with one another and with our God, as we say. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the, all the angels and saints, and you, and you my, my brothers, brothers and sisters, sisters to, to pray for me to the Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our reading from the first book of Kings. Jeroboam thought to himself, The kingdom will return to David's house if now these people go up to offer sacrifices in the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. The hearts of these people will return to their master, Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me. After taking counsel, the king made two calves of gold and said to the people, You have been going up to Jerusalem long enough. Here is your God, O Israel, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. And he put one in Bethel, the other in Dan. This led to sin, because the people frequented those calves in Bethel and in Dan. He also built temples on the high places and made priests from among the people who were not Levites. Jeroboam established a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, to duplicate in Bethel the pilgrimage feast of Judah, with sacrifices to the calves he had made. And he stationed in Bethel priests of the high places he had built. Jeroboam did not give up his evil ways after these, but again made priests for the high places from among the common place, common people. Whoever desired it was consecrated and became a priest of the high places. This was a sin on the part of the house of Jeroboam, for which it was to be cut off and destroyed from the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember us, O Lord, 
as you favor your people. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. We have sinned, we and our fathers. We have committed crimes. We have done wrong. Our fathers in Egypt considered not your wonders. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They made a calf of in Horeb and adored a molten image. They exchanged their glory for the image of a grass-eating bullock. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. They forgot the God who had saved them, who had done great deeds in Egypt, wondrous deeds in the land of Ham, terrible things at the Red Sea. Remember us, O Lord, as you favor your people. Please stand. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, when there again was a great crowd without anything to eat, Jesus summoned the twelve disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd because they have been with me for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will collapse in the way, and some of them had come a great distance. His disciples answered him, Where can anyone get enough bread to satisfy them here in this deserted place? Still he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They replied, Seven. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then, taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks for them and gave them to his disciples to distribute. And they distributed them to the crowd. They also had two fish. He said a blessing over them and ordered them distributed also. They ate and were satisfied. They pick up the fragments left over, seven baskets. There were about 4,000 people. He dismissed the crowd and got into the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Dalmanotha. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. If you notice, this is the second time that our Lord fed multitude of people. In the same Gospel of Mark, but the difference is that the first group were Jews who followed him to listen to his teaching. People who came around to know something new and more powerful teaching, kind of teaching, despite of uh, the healing that our Lord had performed. Here in our Gospel today, we have a big crowd also, and these people were following Jesus for three days already and uh, he noticed and believed that they are hungry that they are hungry Jesus 
Feel this hunger also. Remember when he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. After that, he felt hungry. So he knows how to be hungry. And so he asked his disciples, you have to feed them. Feed them. Out of his compassion and love, he asked his disciples to do something in order to feed them. But his disciples told him, where? Where can anyone get enough bread to satisfy them here in this deserted place? So uh, our Lord simply asked, Kayo, sigurado may baon kayo. How many loaves do you have? And so they replied, seven. Seven. And so our Lord took the seven loaves, bless the loaves, and let the disciples distribute to the people to eat. And so also there were two fish. He blessed the fish, give thanks, and distribute. And they found out later, after everybody were satisfied, that there were seven baskets left over. May subra pa ng basket out of the seven loaves and two fish marami pang subra at lahat nakakain and the number of people who were fed is about 4,000 people my dear friends ano bang meron ng Panginoon? nakikita ng Panginoon ang sitwasyon natin Alam niya ang bawat isa sa atin, ang kondisyon ng ating buhay. Alam niya. Alam niya. And that is why he asked, how many loaves do you have? The disciples, before giving the seven loaves, somehow answered Jesus, that shows they themselves is not yet converted, not yet known Jesus as a Messiah or somebody who is not like them but with power. They have not yet recognized that and that is why they complain. They complain. But when Jesus asked, how many loaves do you have? Seven. Remember, seven is a perfect number. Seven would fed thousands of people. But the question is, where to find this? Seven. They found it among themselves, and that is why they presented, they presented seven loves. Mga kapatid, kung merong tayong pagmamahal, kung merong tayong awa, we need not to go out to somewhere. Hindi na natin kailangan actually lumabas pa tahanap kung anong maibibigay natin 
kung ano yung masyer natin. Lalong lalo na sa mga nagugutom, sa mga naghihirap at mahirap. Pag pumasok tayo ng kusena natin, sigurado ako that there is something to cook, something to share, kahit malamig na tubig lamang we can share sa mga nagugutom, sa mga nauuhaw. Pag pumasok tayo sa ating mga kwarto at buksan natin ng ating mga kabinet, sigurado ako na merong mga damit na hindi na nagagamit. Na siguro either maluwang na o masikip na para sa atin. Ngunit, nasa kabinet lang yun. Di ba? Nandyan lang sa kwarto natin, sa bahay natin. Hindi na kailangan ang uh, malls o sa iba-ibang uh, mga bibilhan ng damit. Doon na. Nandyan na. What will make us realize that it is there? Nothing but our compassion and love. Yun lang ang magbibigay sa atin, magtutulak sa atin na buksan mo yung kabinet mo at marami dyan na maari mo ishare sa walang damit sa mga mahihirap. Buksan mo ang ref mo. Eh, kuminsan eh, nabubulak lang. Yung mga nasa freezer, matagal na na hindi nagamit. That's something that you can share without going out even from your home. From your home. But then, kailangan lamang na maramdaman natin. Maramdaman natin. Because sharing without love and compassion is politics. Sharing without love and mercy is pasikat lamang. Hindi totoo na sharing yan. Lalong-lalo na kapag mag-share ka, kailangan may photographer. Merong selfie, okay, I give this to you. Pero may picture, pagkatapos, ipalabas mo na namimigay ka. I-post mo. Ah, na may tinulungan ako. That is not compassion. That is not love. That is not mercy. That is not the kind of sharing that Jesus did to this multitude of people. And that is because out of His compassion and mercy, He asks, Is there any food among you? Meron ba kayong pagkain? So yung tumutulak sa Kanya, hindi dahil gusto niya lamang mag-share, no. Hindi. He was overcome by His compassionate love, by His fatherly mercy. So that should be the kind of sharing, of giving, that we must have in our life. Share the things that you want to share out of love at hindi dahil, ah, sobra na ito. Hindi ko na ito kailangan. Wala. Ano bang mercy doon? Wala. Ano bang love doon? Wala. Ano ba kind of sharing doon? Wala. You don't share because you do not feel that something is missing from your giving. Dahil ang tunay na pagmamahal, ang tunay na awa ay nanggagaling sa puso at naramdaman. Maramdaman. So napakaganda ng ginawa ng ating Panginoon. Na as followers, 
as disciples, as missionaries, as Christians, as followers of Christ, we also must do the same. It is indeed a challenge for us, lalong-lalo na sa panahon ng pandemic na ito, na marami nangangailangan, maraming humihingi, at maraming kinukulang. Ang kailangan lamang, lalong-lalo na yung mga may sakit, is compassionate love, our presence, our time to be with them. We need to sacrifice certainly because of them. But that is the meaning of generosity. That is the meaning of compassion, of love and mercy. We understand. In the miracle of feeding of 5,000 people, our Lord shows us that the Father will give us everything we need. Let us ask Him for all the gifts He can provide us. For every intention we say, Lord, overflow us with your love. Lord, overflow us with your love, that our pastors, especially the Pope and the bishops, may continue to nourish us with sound teachings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, overflow us with your love. That those who work to combat famine may be successful in their effort to feed millions of starving people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, overflow us with your love. That those who hunger for Christ may find the one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, overflow us with your love. That the sick and the handicapped may find care, support, and consolation from family members. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, overflow us with your love. That the faithful departed may come to the eternal feast in God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, overflow us with your love. In silence, we offer our personal prayers and intentions. We include the intentions of this Mass. And let us not forget, especially those victims of this pandemic. We also pray for the family of those whose loved ones passed. And we offer our prayers for those who are celebrating the birthday today or the anniversaries. Heavenly Father, you have given us the bread from heaven as food for our pilgrim journey. Guide our steps in the way of justice and peace. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask, the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, the through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request may be made in vain to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to be right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn O oh, praise, for truly even the earth ends. You have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. Whom you look on, the lowliness of your handmaid, you give us through her, the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. holiness. Make holy therefore this gift to pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have healed us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we might be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Socrates our Archbishop, Fidelis his assistant, Gerard our Master of the Order, the religious, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our Father Saint Dominic, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we might be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I love you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Peace be still. This is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Son of Mary the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the, the word, word and, my and my soul shall be healed.
Please kneel. We will now pray the prayer for the elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. Let us pray together. Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord, from coercion, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. Let us pray together. Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is our gift to us, a call to serve others. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy that we who Rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary. May, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption to Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much for your presence, especially for your active participation and cooperation during this celebration. Let us continue praying for each other. We still need prayers. And please include in your prayers our frontliners here in the Minor Basilica, our sacristan, our altar servers, our lecturer and commentator, our Eucharistic ministers and others. Please include also our security guards and employees, and especially for our radio staff to continue serving you in this Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Madawal. Please keep safe. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Mass ascended, let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. We will now have the blessing of our sick brothers and sisters. Kindly remember the names of your loved ones who are sick, and we offer this blessing. We will also bless your religious articles. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Free them from all illness and restore them from, to good health through the intercession of our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they were grateful and blessed your holy name, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For your religious articles. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may all these rosaries, images, candles, oil, and other religious articles be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.